Today, I'd like to talk with our church members, sort of an inside conversation about pastoral appointments. When I began many, many moons ago as a Methodist pastor, I was required to go to an orientation session in Leesburg at the Life Enrichment Center. After a couple of days, they brought up in front of our group uh, several clergy that would be retiring soon and served in the conference for 30, 35, 40 years in length. And they asked them, well, what, what is it that, that led you to stay in the ministry? How were you able to stay in the ministry with such longevity? And, and they kind of laughed and kind of shucks. And, and they basically said this, we, we couldn't do anything else. And it, it kind of, you know, at first it was like, ha ha, you know, that must be false humility. They, they're not talented enough to do anything but be a pastor. They couldn't make it elsewhere. So they decided to become a pastor. But then it, it occurred to me, what they were saying is that they weren't released to do anything else, that the calling God had on their life had, had, had remained and had compelled them to stay in ministry. And that, that has really stuck with me over all these years. Uh, on the good days, God's calling when I'm on the mountaintop is, is bright. It's a drawing. It's a wooing. It's an excitement. It's a, a rush to be called as a pastor. On the hard days in the valley, it, it's more of not being released from the ministry. And I share that with you because uh, it really forms my response to the announcement on Sunday that Pastor Craig will be taking another appointment. When Pastor Craig called me on my second week of renewal leave, uh, I understood. Now, granted, as I said on Sunday, I wasn't happy about the timing. The timing was not good. We just learned that Pastor John would be leaving to go with his fiance to North Carolina. He would have loved to have stayed. We would have loved for him to stay. Um, she's going to medical school. Congratulations on that. And, and sometimes plans plans change. And, uh, you know, it was uh, our intention, our plan for Pastor Craig to come back and be with us for a year. We've been in conversation about future moves, but they'd be here at least for a year. And uh, he had signed an agreement, we had signed an agreement, but sometimes plans change and God calls you to do other things. And it was out of rhythm, it was out of sync with the normal appointment system. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And I was away on renewal leave and I was trying to get a break from the church. And here I was literally 10 days in and making all these kind of conversations. And so the timing wasn't great. But that said, I understand where Pastor Craig is coming from. He feels called to take a different role. Now, remember, in the Methodist church, pastors are appointed to the church. We're not hired and fired by the local church. We're not, uh, we're not interviewing at different churches for different jobs. We, we are appointed by the higher church. And that appointment is actually done in consultation with our staff parish relations committee that is a lay team that is basically the personnel committee that oversees all the staffing and particularly the clergy appointments. And uh, it's something that is done or is able to be done on an annual basis. Now we used to sign paperwork every year saying we wanted to return. Now they, they allow you to kind of speak in and out, but it's an annual contract in essence on the part of the church with the pastor and a part of the pastor with the church and above all that on the needs of the higher church. And so this, this did affect um, the situation and does play into this conversation. Now, for one, appointments are a little trickier at the beginning of your ministry than at the end. At the beginning of your ministry, uh, you're usually uh, at a, um, at a, out of a, a sense of calling to have your own church. That's kind of the expectation in the church. Uh, unless you decide early on you're going to be a career associate, which, which is a pretty limited number, and there's plenty of opportunity. And so you become an associate usually at the beginning uh, to be trained, to learn new systems, to, to get a sense of what it is to pastor. I was an associate pastor for two years at First Pearl Gables, and then I went on to take my own church. Pastor Craig was here for a year, came for a year as an intern, and I wound up staying five. And I'm grateful for those five years and the work that he did. Uh, but that's, that's a little longer than most new clergy stay as an associate pastor. Second, as a, as a new pastor, you, you are actually uh, appointed close to a minimum salary that is set by the higher church. They set a minimum salary so that 
small churches can afford a pastor. And of course, you know, Methodist clergy pay all their own taxes is another layer of cost to us. And so, so there's a, that factor that's weighing in about you know, provision for your family and all that works on with that. And, and then of course, the denominational conversation going on right now and the upcoming split of the church over uh, the ordination and marriage of those in the LGBTQ plus community, our brothers and sisters. And you may remember a couple of years ago, I had a meeting of the church and, and we sat down and I said, this is where I feel God has called me to go. This is what I believe. This is where I'm going to lead the church to be more inclusive this way. And I'm not going to use a bully pulpit, but this is what I feel called to do. And, and I have to tell you that's anxiety producing because it's basically saying, this is what I think God tells me to do. And you're going to have to kind of take it or leave it with that or take it or leave me with that. Right. And so, you know, that's also part of this whole conversation. And so it's, it's been, it's been challenging. And um, I, I certainly uh, understand, but at the same time, uh, want to say I'm grateful. I'm grateful for uh, Pastor Craig. I'm grateful for his service. I'm grateful for the way he's worked to, to teach us and to preach and to uh, do pastoral care. I'm grateful for uh, the reconciliation and work to do between ministries, the founding of the Foundry Ministry, and so on. I know that he has been a blessing and will be a blessing to many in the future years of ministry. And pray that God uh, goes with him and Aaron and their children. So, will we replace Pastor Craig? Well, right now, we, we just don't know. Uh, first of all, as we said, we're we're kind of out of rhythm of the season. Pastor appointments, though they're annual, usually take place at the beginning of the year. It's actually a process when you're looking for an associate pastor that starts in the fall and kind of comes to conversation in January is finalized in April. And we're, we're out of that rhythm. And so even if we wanted to replace Pastor Craig today, we, we would be months, if not a year away. And so that's part of the conversation that is uh, that needs to be taken in. Second, we really have to consider if we should take on another associate pastor. Uh, very few churches have two associate pastors, at least in the Methodist church. Uh, in the conference of 650 churches, maybe two dozen. Only two or three churches out of 650 churches have three associate pastors. We, we are resource blessed, and we've had that opportunity through some of the things that evolved, but but in this situation with COVID and the challenges facing the church, should we really be looking for another associate pastor? And when I first came to, enter, to meet the staff parish team about my being appointed here, to, then the meet me because they knew I was coming, um, they, they were very clear. They wanted me to make sure I took care of my family and myself, my health and so forth. And I, I shared with them that I appreciated that. And, and in order to be effective, since I couldn't do everything and also be healthy, um, what did they think should be my priorities? What, what would they prioritize if they were me in selecting what to do? And they went around the table and they named literally 17 different things that they thought I as a pastor should do. And I, I hear that in this context sometimes where someone will say, we have too many pastors in this place. And the very same person will say in the next breath, I want my pastor to be, or I want the pastor to be at leading my Bible study or I want the pastor to be at my dinner, or I want the pastor to visit me. I want the pastor to do the hospital calls and I want the pastor to teach this Sunday school class. And I want the pastor to lead this mission. And, and it just doesn't reconcile together. And so we have some ongoing conversation right now at the leadership level about what should pastors be doing? What can pastors not do? And others can help to carry on the ministry. And so we'll update you as we go forward, but right now we, we just don't know. The good news is two things. First, we have two wonderful associate pastors. Uh, when Pastor Gary and Pastor Jane were leaving after two decades of incredible service to our family to take their own church, um, we looked for an associate pastor and Pastor Rachel was appointed here. And we have been blessed. She has stepped, she had big shoes. She stepped right in. She's provided wonderful leadership. She's a part of the family already in a quick year. And uh, we're, we're just super pleased with her presence. Then this past spring, as I knew that it was possible that Pastor John would be leaving to go with his uh, North Carolina, uh, I was introduced to Pastor Philip, and we began some conversations. He's from the Nazarene Church. He's a Nazarene pastor, so he's kind of outside of that appointment process, and we began to talk about what this might look like, 
And uh, before I left in April, I said to the staff parish committee, hey, if you want to move this way to help bolster up some of those transitions, I'm good with it. I bless this. And they did. And so we have two highly committed, hardworking, talented, uh, Christ-like associate pastors who want to be here and want to be a part of the longevity of this ministry. The other good news is that we know that good things are ahead, that God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, that we may be wandering in the wilderness right now of a pandemic, uh, and it's hard in the wilderness, but we know that ultimately the church will overcome. The church is God's instrument to bring about his kingdom. And there is a promised land on the other side of this. And I can't wait. I can't wait to get there with you. So that's my thoughts on pastoral appointments. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in church. God bless.